So let me now introduce to you uh, the next speaker. I would like to invite you the proof, uh, if you want, that uh, thinking in terms of consumer journey and applying experience thinking is important. And I will show you through an example that probably none of you could imagine, uh, that is uh, through industrial equipment. Uh, let me invite on stage the Vice President of uh, Industrial Equipment Industry for the System, Mr. Philippe Bartisol. Thank you, Monica. So let's illustrate the buying experience. That is one of the experiences that Monica just showed. For this, I will invite you through a journey in a company called Bluefield Industry. So we are part, let's suppose we are part of the Bluefield Industry. And we'll start with the sales manager. And we'll see how the sales manager, who is taking a flight to see his favorite customer, Philippe, on top right, uh, how this sales manager will leverage the 3D experience and all the engineering or all the, the uh, departments within his company in order to offer his customer the best uh, buying experience. And therefore, we are going to support alongside the company uh, Julian's sales experience. So let's launch the video. So Julian is at the airport, he's taking a long flight, he's, he's in Europe, he's taking a long flight to Los Angeles where he's going to visit his customer, Crystal Spring. Prior to departing, he's reviewing his dashboard, and in his dashboard he is keeping abreast with the latest news in his industries, with all the um, communities that he is part of, and as well, the competition. And he will pull out the uh, proposal that he has for Crystal Spring. Now, what you see here, he's got two solutions. He has to, to uh, the customer wants a complete filling line. This is a, um, a filling uh, company. He has the choice between two machines in parallel at 25,000 bottles per hour, as the customer wants a 50,000 bottles per hour, or the new machine, all in one, 45,000 bottles per hour. Now, we're a bit too short there, but everyone understands that from a CapEx perspective, offering one machine will be much better than offering two machines. And he knows that he has already floated the idea previously in this ideation process that you see here. Um, is it possible to increase this new machine that runs at 45,000 bottles per hour to 50,000 bottles per hour? And this has been already exchanging in the past weeks uh, ideas on this. And through this ideation process, everybody can express its needs and ideas and uh, provide feedback to other uh, colleagues' ideas. So what he does is that he's going to call. He's calling the product manager and says, are you guys ready to support me in increasing this by 10%? And the product manager says, yes. So he promotes the idea to a requirement. From now on, this is a requirement shared by everybody in the company, whether in engineering, mechanical, uh, electrical, hydraulics, uh, manufacturing, after sales, everyone. So uh, now we are with Josefina. Josefina is the modular architect. So she retrieves the new requirement because this is a requirement now. And she goes into the functional view of the equipment. You see here that uh, you can describe the uh, behavior of the machine in different functions. And you can simulate through the Modelica um, language and, and the uh, Demola application, you can simulate the different characteristics of the machine. So she sees that the machines here runs at 45,000. And she saw, she figured out that it was the infid wheel that was not, that was blocking. So she takes the new, a new design, which is a rotating infid, infid wheel instead of the other one, and runs 
the simulation again. Now I'm above 50,000, I'm good to go. Let's take a, a step back and see what happened a few months before when the guys designed this new rotating infid wheel. So you see here uh, the main um, engineering, uh, mechanical engineering um, guy that is using Sketch in the beginning, placing the different wheels without designing yet and having a skeleton of the future machines. And he invites then his colleagues on the, uh, from the mechanical and the kinematic department, and they can review the design. And then he will call from libraries the designs that the different wheels and position them in the assembly design very easily, just drag and dropping. Now, Isam here is working on the filling unit, the individual filling unit. So he's been designing this and then he is multiply, multiplying this around the carousel. Look at how beautiful this machine looks like now. Now let's come back to today's situation. We got to help our sales manager, Julian. Isam has to add this part on top so that with the increased speed, speed the bottle does not get out. So it just modifies the part and then populate the complete carousel with the modified filling unit. They can, they've been chatting together, they can now review. One is um, Eve, the other one is Isam, everything's correct, let's go for it. Let's go for this new design that will allow the uh, increased speed and you can simulate how the bottles will move throughout the carousel. Look at how you can have your complete machine. You have 16 axes here, but in reality you might have up to 70 axes in this machine. Let's now go to the uh, simulation, the two types of simulation with learning. Learning is in Shanghai, but it doesn't matter because accessing the a 3D experience platform, it can make sure that the base will be solid enough with the new design. And, very important, using, again, um, the system engineering capabilities, he will do hardware in the line. He will check the filling line, or the filling unit, with four motors, just with this small Arduino one, and having modeled all behaviors, look how this machine beautifully runs. And of course you can have it in 3D and you can really go into your machines once you have all the parts moving. And it does not work only with orange juice. So during the flight, we're still, uh, Julian is still on his uh, 14 or 15 hours flight. The last thing that the team does with four, three people in the room and then learning remotely is that they are making sure that they have, all of them have a good understanding of the machine. They use the rotating table. They can see absolutely everything. And why is this important? Because Francois, who's on the board there, he is the product manager. He has to make sure that he validates this and then immediately after this, this design goes into the configurator. Because Julian, when, it, when he uh, lands, he needs to show his customer the new design on the configurator. So um, Francois validate, after the review, Francois validated in the configurator, it's now in. And when Julian arrives and sees Philippe, he can show directly on his tablet, he can configure the, um, the machine that's needed, whether it is one liter, one liter two liters bottle, whether it is um, 70 dB or 90 uh, dB uh, for the, the uh, sound. And it immediately populates the 3D, absolutely immediately. 
So that's the 90 dB. We got the housing now. So they can discuss immediately because they see everything. And this is the exact configuration. This is not pulled from a library. And look what they can do then. You can, once you have the right configuration, three, you are three click away from this absolutely beautiful renderings and a few hours of calculation, yes. But you can automate the exact configuration for your sales purposes. Not pulling something 80% adequate from the library. The exact the exact um, uh, machines that you have shown on your tablet, you can get absolutely beautiful rendering for that. And this is what we call the new buying experience for Philip. So we've seen through this short video how the 3D experience can support sales, pulling all the resources, all the departments from the company behind the sales manager in, in order to get more top line. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.